Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's episode, I wanna talk all about how you approach a patient with common cold-like symptoms. And tis the season for the common cold, but when a patient presents to the emergency department with these symptoms, you need to think about some other pathologic etiologies for these symptoms. And deciding whether they need antibiotics or a possible chest x-ray can be very difficult sometimes. So let's get started. Before I even walk into the room with a patient with a chief complaint of upper respiratory infection, I like to look at their past medical history and possible risk factors that might broaden my differentials. So for instance, if they are tobacco users, tobacco users could have pre-COPD like lungs. So they might need an inhaler or albuterol treatment in the emergency room. Or if they do have COPD, this could be a COPD exacerbation. And then if they are a tobacco user and they have a long-term cough, you need to think about lung cancer. Also, I like to look at if a patient is immunocompromised in any way. Immunocompromised patients are at a higher risk of getting pneumonia, especially if the patient has HIV. They are at a higher risk of getting PCP pneumonia in particular. And then other things I look at if the patient has eustachian tube dysfunction, a history of sinus infections, or if they have been homeless. Homeless people are at a higher risk of getting TB, as well as incarcerated individuals. The first question I like to ask in these types of patients is simply, what is going on? And with this open-ended question, patients really can tell you a timeline of everything that's occurring and the symptoms that are associated. And if they didn't tell you already, make sure you accumulate how long the symptoms have been happening. This can help you really narrow down what type of pathology is occurring and possible treatment options. For example, for acute bronchitis, you can't make the diagnosis unless you've had a cough for at least five days. And when it comes to influenza, you can't treat them unless it's been less than 48 hours since symptom onset. And when it comes to acute sinusitis, it doesn't become bacterial in nature until seven to 10 days after symptom onset. Next, I like to ask about the symptoms the patient hasn't mentioned yet, particularly the symptoms that might require antibiotic therapy. So ear pain for otitis media, sore throat for strep throat, or sinus pain or pressure for acute bacterial sinusitis. And then I like to ask about the bad symptoms, particularly shortness of breath, wheezing, chest tightness, or pyloritic chest pain that could signify pneumonia or COPD. And then I like to ask about fevers, night sweats, weight loss, or hemoptysis that could signify TB or possible lung cancer. And after getting a good history from your patient, make sure you do a thorough physical exam that includes looking for any lymphadenopathy, looking into both ears and looking at the throat, and then listening to the heart and lung sounds. And then from there, you can usually have a pretty good idea of what route you may want to go. For example, Influenza, your patient will have fever, body aches and chills that started pretty suddenly, and they might have associated gastrointestinal nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. And if the symptoms have started less than 48 hours ago, you can flu test them and treat them for the flu. If you diagnose your patient with acute bronchitis, then they must have a cough for at least five days with or without sputum production, and they might have lung sounds that clear after the patient coughs. And if you diagnose your patient with acute sinusitis, then they might have sinus pain or pressure, purulent nasal drainage, or fever. And if it's been going on for seven to 10 days with or without double sickening, then this could be acute bacterial sinusitis. If you think your patient may have pneumonia, then they might have cough, fever, dyspnea, or pleuritic chest pain. And on exam, they might have rails, bronchi, or crackles and they might have hypoxemia if it's severe. Make sure you get a chest x-ray on these patients in the PA and lateral view. And then you can use the mnemonic CURB65 to kind of evaluate if the patient needs to be admitted or they can be discharged. Seen here is the mnemonic CURB65. One point is assigned for each criterion that is met. Up-to-date authors generally favor hospital admission for patients with a score of one or two. Although patients with a score of 1 due to being greater than 65 years of age who do not have major comorbidities do not necessarily require admission. For patients with a score of 3 to 5, hospitalization is indicated, and the patient should be assessed for possible intensive care unit admission, especially if the score is 4 or 5. 
Next, if you think your patient may have strep throat, make sure you examine their lymph nodes in the anterior cervical distribution, look for any tonsil exudate, ask if they have a cough because the absence of a cough makes strep throat more likely, and then make sure they don't have a fever or if they do, that also makes it more likely. And I like to use the Centaur criteria to guide my treatment after that. Seen here is the Centaur criteria. One point is given for each criterion. The likelihood of strep pharyngitis increases as total points rise. Patients with less than three points are unlikely to have group A strep and generally do not require testing or treatment. Patients with a score of greater than three may benefit from testing. So after you have the diagnosis under hand, you can always help treat the patient's symptoms because that's the main reason why they're theirs. They just don't feel good. So if they have a sore throat, then you can recommend coreseptic throat spray or lozenges that are both found over the counter, and then ibuprofen and Tylenol if that doesn't help. And if the patient has a cough, then honey mixed into warm liquid really helps for this, but also dextromethorphan, Teslon pearls, or codeine. And if the patient has nasal congestion, recommend pseudoephedrine or over-the-counter Afrin for this, but just keep in mind that both of these medications can raise a patient's blood pressure. So using caution with hypertension, or you can recommend cortisetin for these patients. And then sometimes if the sinus pain or pressure is really bad, you can do a short course of steroids to relieve this pressure.